Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson, and this is Keep It Real. Keep It Real is all about real talk based on my 20 plus years of clinical experience. What we're really talking about is real food, real medicine, and real change. Hi, I'm Dr. Chad Larson. Today, I'm going to answer a question that I got from a participant in my program called the Metabolic Magic Method. I've already answered the question for this person uh, in a live uh, Q&A Zoom call, uh, but I thought I would just uh, present the question here so that you can hear the answer as well. It's a pretty common question, so I thought maybe other people can get value from it as well. So the question is about cholesterol. And um, the question is basically in the program for people to reverse metabolic syndrome and get off of the, what I call the metabolic spectrum, we talk about switching out their diet uh, from kind of a common, so let's call it the standard American diet to a diet that's more low carb and focused on healthy animal fats and uh, certain types of vegetables. I'll talk more about those details another time, but basically it's a diet that uh, I encourage people to switch their breakfast from a sweet breakfast to a savory breakfast. And oftentimes if people are following the cultural influences of what makes up breakfast, oftentimes eggs are gonna be part of the conversation. And so a question came up that their doctor has found that they have high cholesterol and they said, look out for foods that are high in cholesterol because that can add to their over overall cholesterol levels and that could influence their risk factor for heart disease. So it's a common question and it's a mainstream uh, piece of advice. Unfortunately, it's really not all that accurate. So let's break it down a little bit. Let's zoom out for just a moment and talk about the cholesterol panel. It's also called the lipid panel. The cholesterol panel or lipid panel includes classically uh, cholesterol, total cholesterol, um, HDL cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, and triglycerides. In my opinion, there should be many, many more markers in that section to include things that uh, I'll maybe talk about in just a moment. But just relative to those typical four markers, there's a lot of misunderstanding about what those markers are, and more importantly, how they represent a risk factor for disease, especially cardiovascular disease. So let's take cholesterol for a moment. Yes, if you eat a cholesterol-rich meal and you looked at the blood of somebody following that meal, then you would probably see elevated levels of cholesterol. However, one quick aside from that, most of the cholesterol that is in the diet is esterified meaning there's an ester group that's hanging off of this big molecule and it's, it's too big to get readily absorbed in, uh, through our digestive tract to get into our circulation. So that's one thing. First of all, just a lot of the dietary cholesterol is actually not very well absorbed to even show up in the blood. But the bigger point is when you go to uh, get a blood test, especially one that includes a lipid panel and things like glucose, it's a fasting test. So you know, it's been 12 hours since you've eaten anything. And so even if it was a cholesterol rich meal that you consumed, all of that, all of that cholesterol from that diet has been metabolized. And that coupled with the fact that it's not very well absorbed anyhow, really doesn't speak to the influence of a cholesterol rich meal on your lipid levels of cholesterol. So, um, but you may have noticed that maybe your cholesterol is climbing up over time and particularly maybe your LDL cholesterol, the one that's considered bad cholesterol, is also creeping up over time. So then the question is, is there something that's happening in the diet? And it could be other factors as well, other lifestyle factors, which we'll talk about some other time. But relative to diet, is there something that's going on in the diet that's influencing the cholesterol going up? So yes, there can be. And let's add one more piece of information. Whenever I look at a lipid panel, I also want to look at the breakdown or let's say additional markers in addition to the total LDL cholesterol. When we think of LDL, there's actually a couple of different versions of LDL that would be helpful to evaluate to really understand a person's risk. There is small, dense LDL. So LDL is low density lipoproteins. There's a small, dense version of LDL, which is particularly unhealthy because a couple of reasons. One, the liver doesn't really recognize small dense L LDL as the typical form of LDL. So it tends to float around in circulation for an extended period of time. 
And because of that long sort of lifespan of small, dense LDL, it's more vulnerable to oxidation. So that's another form of LDL, which I think everybody should have, be, should have tested on their lipid panel is ox LDL or oxidized LDL. And it's mostly the small version of, L, that, of LDL that's more vulnerable to oxidation. Think of oxidation as like an inflamed version of LDL. And it's much more vulnerable at that point to get pushed into blood vessel walls where we don't want it. And that's how things like, you know, pathology to the arteries could start to manifest. The opposite of small, dense LDL is large, buoyant LDL. So stick with me for a sec. I'll get to the point in just a moment. So basically, LDL is sort of has a couple different options. Your liver can either produce small, dense LDL or large, buoyant LDL. The large, buoyant is, for the most part, too big to get stuck in your blood vessel wall, so it's not really um, as much of a cardiovascular risk. And because it's a more let's call it natural and normal form of LDL, it exists for actually just very, very short period of time. And it's much, much less vulnerable to that inflamed reaction called oxidation. So even if a person's total LDL is going up, there's a second question, which is, is it coming from small dense LDL or from large buoyant LDL? And that is very easily answered when the right kind of blood work is ordered. So if somebody's total LDL is going up and the question is, okay, why is it going up? We want to make sure that we're looking at small LDL and oxidized LDL so we can really answer, is it truly the bad form of LDL that's going up? And if it is, here's the point when it comes to dietary influence. The thing that instigates the liver to overproduce the small version of LDL, the unhealthy version of LDL is sugar. And sugar comes in lots of forms, uh, you know, certainly any food that has sugar added to it, but also you get to think about things like grains and grain-based foods, you know, your pastas and crackers and chips and cookies and pastries, anything that's made from refined flour um, turns into sugar very, very quickly. And that could also contribute to instigating the more small LDL going up. So a much, much bigger dietary influence when it comes to cholesterol going up, especially LDL cholesterol, especially small, dense LDL cholesterol and oxidized cholesterol is sugar. So when I have a person's diet switch out from, um, you know, starting with that first meal of the day, that first meal of the day really helps to set the blood sugar rhythm for the day. So we really want to get that right. And so participants in my program, we switch out a sweet uh, meal for a more savory meal. Some examples might be from going from oatmeal to maybe, you know, eggs and, you know, you know, maybe a piece of avocado or something like that. Or um, I'd say another common one would be like a bagel or a piece of toast. That, because that's grain-based, even, even, even if they just put butter on it, they're not putting jelly or something on it, um, it's still considered a sweet breakfast because of how quickly those grains uh, turn into sugar. So we want to, you know, change that into something more savory. And, and hopefully richer in protein. That's a topic that I'll probably cover in a future video. But the point is we're trying to switch from more of a sweet to more of a savory. And so the question was, well, you know, I wanna have eggs now for breakfast, but my doctor said I need to watch my cholesterol. So hopefully I've addressed that in a more nuanced way that it's really not the cholesterol-rich foods in our meals that influence our fasting levels of cholesterol and LDL, but it's much more about the sugar content and the more processed grain-type foods that instigate the liver to make the more unhealthy version of LDL called small, dense, and oxidized LDL. So hopefully that answers that question. Until then, see you next time. Keep it real.